Hey guys, Bobby here, and if you are a wedding filmmaker utilizing a motorized gimbal like the Zeon Crane or the Ronin S, and you're looking to maximize that fancy piece of gear, then this video is for you. That's right, this is the three best gimbal movements for wedding videographers, and really I should say that it is my three favorite and most used movements. And if you like this video and you want to see more like it in the future, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, making sure to also hit that notification bell to be the first to see new posts. Now before I break down the three moves, I think it's incredibly important to say that if you are early on in your career of filming weddings, I would advise you not to use a gimbal. Now I go deeper uh, on this in one of my most recent tutorials, Five Mistakes That Wedding Videographers Make, which I will link here or in the description or something. But essentially I think it stunts your growth as a storyteller. So be sure to have a solid base of work and experience before adding these types of moves in. All right, let's jump into it with number three, which is tracking shots. Now this is basically just a straightforward or backward movement. And there are a few areas that I love to use this. First is with the bride and groom, having them walk away from the camera or towards the camera and either following them or being in front of them. And it's a staple shot in a lot of wedding films, but it is a great direction to capture natural interaction. Of course, you can vary the distance greatly uh, as well to mix up the shot, either a wide shot or close up on hands or something like that. And when you walk during these shots, you want a gimbal walk, which means you are trying to eliminate your up and down movement as much as possible. I like to go heel to toe and I keep my knees pretty bent the entire time, trying more so to glide through my movement rather than walk and going up and down like that. I also find myself using this a lot during some final shots of prep as well as ceremony establishing shots. It's a little bit different, but still just a straight linear movement. And I love a slow push in or a pull out at some of these points and I find that they can be really impactful visually. Moving on to number two, and that is the jib shot or crane shot. Now for many years we brought jibs of various sizes to weddings and while they always allowed us to capture some impressive shots, they were a gigantic pain to deal with. And while you can't get quite as high as you could with a jib when you're on a gimbal, the jib or crane down shot is quite easily accomplished. And we love to use this for establishing shots of the ceremony and the reception. It gives a good feel for the size of the space which works great for many wedding venues. And it's a great transition shot from one part of the day to another. Of course, you can do this both up and down, and you can often even decide in post as long as your subject is entirely static, like a reception setup without any people in it. This is a pretty easy technique to do as you just need to hold the gimbal up high or start down low and slowly move the opposite direction, making sure to have the camera tilted as you desire. And finally, number one on the list is what I'm gonna call a parallax movement. I'm not quite sure if that's the exact phrase, we first started getting shots like this with a slider and we've since gotten a lot better at capturing them with a gimbal over the years. And we absolutely love how they look. A good way to think of it is sort of like the motion of a wide half circle. You have side to side movement with a slight rotation of the camera opposite the direction of the slide. You want it to be incredibly subtle and it is very easy to overdo it, but when it's done correctly, it can really add to many parts of the film. From wedding party to romantics to detail shots, it gives you the benefit of having movement in frame as opposed to a static shot, while being subtle enough that it can really be cut next to most other shots you might capture. The movement for this shot is a little more tough and it looks a bit ridiculous, but to make it as smooth as possible, I like to spread my legs out beyond my shoulder width, and then I bend at my knees, get low in my stance, almost like a squat. Then I shift all my weight to one side, and I slowly bring it to the other side while minimally rotating the gimbal. So those are my top three gimbal movements that we use at almost every wedding, and there are definitely more movements as well that you can do. Additionally, you can often combine these and other movements to spice them up a bit and make them a little bit more challenging. Also, while I mentioned the Zeon Crane and the Ronin S earlier in this video, just know that these are of course not specific to those gimbals or even one-handed gimbals in general. These moves can be accomplished with a variety of different models, whether it's for cameras or cell phones or a GoPro. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have another movement that you find yourself using often, please leave it in the comments below, as well as any questions you might have. And as always, I'd love to have you subscribe and follow along for more videos.